Good to have you here on this Father's Day. We're just so we're just so uh, happy that you came out and wanted to spend your Father's Day with us, um, especially all the men in the house. And we're we're so pleased that you're here today on Father's Day, because uh, Mother's Day is usually the day. It's like what do, what what would every mom get for for Mother's Day is to say like I want my kids to come to church with me. Right, and usually the dads, the stereotypical reply for the dads is, "What do I want to do on Father's Day?" Is like sleep in, go golfing, you know, watch watch sports on TV. You know, they're much different. But look at all the men here. We're just so proud of you uh, being here and wanting to grow in God, because there's plenty of voices that are attempting to shape men today, time to define what man is or redefine what it is to be a man. Everything from those ridiculous Old Spice commercials and Axe commercials, if you've ever seen those that are, that are so silly, to the bumbling and ignorant, dumb-witted dad that you see in sitcoms and things like that, or the lazy guy in every type of movie or, or TV show. You have all sorts of ideas of what it is to be a guy. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you have, you have the same thing, but on the other way, the cookie cutter fit for you of power suits and power ties, right? That dominant message of us as men needing to be strong in our masculinity, right? We need to be be lions, right? King of the jungle, that we're supposed to succeed. We're supposed to conquer at all costs, that we have to have physically, mentally, and emotionally be tougher, I remember watching one one kids movie with our with our kids, and one of the caricatures of a of a dad, he's he's about to cry, and a tear is going down his cheek, and he stares at the tear, and he's like the tear, and he's like, Rrr! and the tear goes back up into his eye, like not allowed to cry, not allowed. Tears don't belong on this face, right? We have that idea of what a man is supposed to be, and even in church, there can be underlying messages. The women are great. Everything is awesome. But men, you need to tuck in your shirt, right? You need to clean up that scruff on your face. Carry some mints because you got coffee breath. There's always room for improvement for guys sometimes to do better and to be better. And there's a reason why that seems inescapable. Since the fall, God, when God told Adam that he'd have to work hard because the ground was cursed, The enemy has continually twisted that to imply that our hardiness, our toughness, our masculinity, and our mastery of life's challenges as men, that is our identity. But larger than our personalities, bigger than our our actions and our, our heroic things, more attainable than people's expectations of us, Starting today, I want us to reframe what it looks like to be a man. That at Life Center, to be formed as a man by this defining question. What does it mean for men to be strong in the Lord? What does it mean for men to be strong in the Lord? Well, it's not written just for men. This passage in Ephesians is a great target for each man whether you're young or mature at Life Center. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And that's, that's not merely strong in your field of work, whatever you do for a living. It's not just strong in your personality where you command the room when you walk in. It's not just strong in your masculinity where nobody would be willing to arm wrestle you because they know that their arm would be broken or something. It's not just in your achievements where you have more trophies on the shelf than anybody else. And it's, if applicable for you today, it's not that you are just the strong one in your marriage or you're strong for your kids. There's sometimes men have given up and they don't know what's culturally acceptable as strong. And at other times, as men, we spend all of our time being strong for others that we have no imagination 
or energy or effort left to be strong in the Lord. But in reality, and by this I mean kingdom reality, training to be strong in the Lord is what makes you strong in all other areas of life. And here's the thing. Every kingdom has a king, a Lord who reigns. So when we take this perspective from a kingdom reality, being strong in the Lord requires a real relationship with Jesus as Lord. Okay, do you hear that? Being strong in the Lord as men requires a real relationship with Jesus as Lord. Jesus as Lord, though, it's not really a concept that's familiar, that we're familiar with today. We don't use that terminology. Today, maybe we could use the word leader for Lord. And it may have a little bit better understanding of what we're talking about. It's not a direct correlation, but it may serve our purpose today. Because a leader is one that you're willing to follow. And that is a question that has to be answered before any specifics can be looked at, what it means to be strong in the Lord. Can you honestly answer whether you see Jesus as one worthy to follow and to be like? Because what is most universally true is that no man is willing to follow someone that they don't see as worthy. That man may show up to church. They may uh, show up to church to make their mom happy, their spouse happy, a client or a friend happy, but they themselves are not following Jesus or will not follow Jesus as leader or Lord. Have you ever paused to think about who Jesus was as a man? Why we should follow this man? What qualities did he possess that would identify him as a man that we are to emulate? Well, if you were to read through the Gospels, you'd find that he didn't rely on his appearance but on his character, right? So all, that, all those days of sculpting your abs and making sure that you look awesome so that you look like a guy that's worth following, it's all about character. It's all about character. We don't neglect our bodies, but it's character that we go for. He understood mission and calling and responsibility, and he would not be sidetracked. No matter who tried to sidetrack Jesus and get him off course and get him into stupid debates about things that didn't really matter, he stayed on track with what his father had told him to do. And that's the next thing. He understood authority. He understood authority and how to honor it, how to submit to his father because his father was the one that was leading him. He also understood brotherhood because he took 12 guys and, and even more after the beyond that, to live life with and to be known by. He understood leaving a legacy, teaching everything that he was taught to others. He wasn't afraid of hard work, a hard life. He grew up and was trained as a carpenter, working with his hands. And he would spend three years virtually homeless, moving from place to place, with nowhere to, to lay his head. He understood rhythms of life where he would go to weddings and he would go to feasts, but he would also go and be alone so he could reconnect with his father. And he'd also spend time with crowds where he could impart what he, had, what he knew from his father. He understood courage in the midst of difficulty, how to live with both grace and truth. He understood sacrifice on so many levels with his family, with his friends, a life given over to a gruesome and unjust death. That sounds like a guy worth following, doesn't it? Sounds like a man who's stepping up to the plate and leading the way he should. So how was he able to do all those things? How was he able to be all those things? Because we may want to check off one or two maybe that we're trying to accomplish in our lives, but when we hit that whole list, we're like, that's, that's tough. I don't know if I can live up to all that. So how did Jesus do it? Jesus dedicated his life to being strong in his father's strength. And this is what the Apostle Paul would unpack in Ephesians chapter 6. Because being strong in the Lord is living our Christian life 
experiencing spiritual warfare while learning to use the Lord's resources. Because Paul's imagery that he uses in the chapter is meant to give us a picture of what this practically looks like. Man, there are five focuses that we need to focus on. This is applicable to everybody, but today's Father's Day, so we're talking to men. First one, put on and don't wrestle. Take up, stand, and persevere. Put on, don't wrestle, take up, stand, and persevere. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Now, putting on the whole armor means you have to go all in and fully commit yourself. Now, it doesn't mean you have to follow perfectly and never have any hiccups along the way, but it means you have to follow completely. Half measures don't cut it. They will leave you and others wounded. We played horseshoes when we were at the men's retreat. And what does the saying say? Close only counts in horseshoes and in hand grenades. You can only, you have to go all in with Jesus because you can't, you can't go about it halfway because it doesn't work. It hurts people. It hurts people when we do so. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities and against cosmic powers over this present darkness and against the spiritual forces of the evil one in heavenly places. That's why it matters that we go all in because we're not wrestling against each other here. We're not having fights with our our husbands or wives or our spouses or our friends. There is a cosmic enemy who wants to destroy your relationships, destroy your relationship with God. He wants to tear apart the fabric of anything that's good in your life so he has control over you. And we do indeed don't see that wrestle for what it is. We are torn apart. So we have to be all in with God. So how do we live this out? How do we teach this and be in the world in such a way as to do damage to darkness, not just defend ourselves, but actually do damage to what the the enemy is trying to do? Like I said, don't waste your time wrestling against others when you are called to a higher calling of wrestling against the darkness that's influencing others. As scripture makes it clear that the enemy host is no match for the Lord. We can see in Colossians 2.15 where it says he, that the Lord has disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them. That's in Colossians 2.15. Sorry, there's no slide for it. But God says he has openly triumphed over them and put them to shame. And we step into that battle with him over a defeated enemy a shamed enemy that is just trying to drag as many people away from God as possible in his defeat. And we damage uh, darkness when we learn how to take up very specific things. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. So what do we do? We take up, right? We take up the belt of truth We take up that shield of faith. We take up the helmet of salvation. We take up the sword of the spirit. We train up in God's word to pray and to proclaim the gospel. These are aspects of God's and Jesus as the Messiah's character and work, which with we now can be equipped with as Christians. If you were to look in Isaiah chapter 11 in Isaiah 59, you would see that God himself says he puts those things on. He puts on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation when there is no one to save the oppressed. So think of that. Then God gives us armor to wear, his breastplate of righteousness, his helmet of salvation. We get to wear the very armor that God says he goes to battle in. To me, that's so profound. That's so profound that God says, this is what I use when I go and rescue the lost and the broken and the hurting. This is exactly what you need to wear when you're going out to rescue the lost and the broken and the hurting from the kingdom of darkness and bringing them to the kingdom of light. Think of it. His righteousness, 
his salvation, what he wears, he gives to us. So putting on these disciplines, we learn how to stand and be in the world while not being of it. Stand in and on truth. Stand in and on and for righteousness. Stand in and on and with shoes that bring a gospel of peace everywhere you go. Now, if this seems like a lot of work, it is. And in your own strength, it's more work than you can do. So how do we persevere? How do we persevere? For it not to be in our own strength, men, in following Jesus, we need a mental shift. Shift your mindset from trying to training. From trying to training. We often say, uh, you know, I've seen that before. I've tried that before and it didn't work. I tried those spiritual disciplines. I tried fasting. All I did was get hungry and faint and, and grumpy. It doesn't work for me. We never saw the fruit. It's like s- switching our, our weight and fitness routines just because we don't see the, the results right away. That exor- exercise bike that sits in the garage, those weights stacked in the corner collecting dust, or gym membership that you pay for but never use. Craig Rochelle tries it this, says it this way. To try is to attempt to do the right thing by exerting effort in a moment. To train is to commit to developing strategic habits that, help, that equip you to do the right thing in the moment. Try is the lifestyle of earning. We try and get what we need. Training is a lifestyle of consistent effort in following Jesus. Now, for many of you, you may remember this, and maybe some of you haven't, but there was a scene in the 1980 movie. That should, that should date it for you right there when I'm talking about a movie that was made 43 years ago. But in the 1980 movie, Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. All right, some people don't remember that. They know that. Where the old character, Yoda, if you know that guy, he's a little green guy, and I think they got the same guy who does Kermit the Frog's voice to do his voice. They had the same voice. Um, He's trying to teach a young follower, Luke, how to use the supernatural force that is at the, the center of the series of movies. And Luke wants to leave his training early because he's... He, he wants to go help his friends, but his, his spaceship is stuck in a swamp and he can't get it out. And Yoda tells him to lift it out using the force, just like pick it up using the force, right? And they always, in the movies, they, they put their hand out and they go like this and try to lift things and stuff like that. Uh, and Luke half-heartedly says he'll try. He says, well, I'll try, to which Yoda responds to him an often repeated phrase in my house, do or do not, there is no try. You do or you do not. There is no try. Do-do is the work of training. It's putting on the strength of God. It's his armor being put on, not our own. And in the movie, after Luke fails to lift it out, he's sitting there and he's like, "Uh, uh, uh," and then he's like, oh, it's impossible. It can't be done. And he, he goes and wanders off to sulk. And Yoda then uh, lifts it out for him. And Luke comes back and he's like, what? How did this happen? I don't believe it. And in that moment, Yoda turns to him and says, and that is why you fail. Men, do you believe that God is worth following? Do you believe that Jesus is who he says he is? And that he's a man of character? That he's put on the whole armor of God, his father's armor, to live the way that God has asked him to live? Do you believe he's worth following? And that not only is he worth following, but he said, all this armor that I've used to live the life that I just lived, here, you can live it too. You just have to train in how to wear this. Train how to wear my righteousness. Train how to use my truth and not your truth. Train how to use faith to shield yourself against attacks of the enemy, to say, no, I can stand strong in who God's made me to be because the shield of my faith protects me. Do you believe? You don't need to be anything other than who God has created you to be. 
Whatever the world has told you to be, whatever the world has said, this is what a man looks like, forget it. Because God has called you to be exactly who he created you to be. And if you don't know who that is, then step one is just getting with God. Step one is saying, God, I don't even know who I'm supposed to be, but I'm here to find out. And he will take you on that journey. As he has created us, we all need to be more like Jesus, his son. And to be more like Jesus, we, must need, we need to learn to be strong in his strength. And that's how we go from trying and struggling to be strong and trying to fight off the enemy and barely escape him to being trained in armor and getting on the offensive and doing damage to an already defeated enemy. If you're here today and you've only ever shown up, you've only ever found yourself here but not being led by King Jesus, and if you find yourself trying and not training, if you find yourself not believing, I invite you today to step into this moment and follow him. You will not be doing this alone. Because if you have any encouragement from being united with Jesus, if there's any comfort from his love, if there's any common sharing from having his Holy Spirit in you, if there's any tenderness or compassion, then make our joy complete by being like-minded with us, having the same love that we have in Christ Jesus, being in one spirit with us as we follow him, in one mind as we say, this is the mind of God and we're going to live it out. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And therefore God has exalted him to the highest place and given him the name that is above every name. That at that name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, is our leader to the glory of God the Father. That's Philippians 2, 1 to 11. Men, if there's an aspect of training that's on our own, but we need to train together. We need moments like the youth, re- the youth retreat, the retreat. I said youth retreat because that's where the youth go for camp every summer. And I went there for summer after summer after summer with the youth. But we need more retreats. We need more moments where men come together to say, this is what it looks like to follow God. We need more moments where men can be vulnerable with each other, where we can say, hey, this is where my struggle is. This is where my struggle to pick up the armor and walk is. Brothers, can you hold me up in this? Can you encourage me in this so that I can feel strong in walking out what God has for me? And so we're announcing that we'll be launching a men's conference called Strong this November that that will run annually to inspire and train up men to be strong in the Lord. It'll run November's, November 3rd, 4th, 2023. And the tickets, are, t- tickets will be about $49. And for students, it's always free. All the guys, uh, students, they can always get, for, get in for free. And it's going to be 
mega. It's going to be awesome. It'll be a weekend of strengthening, building up your faith, uh, encouragement, laughter, and some good food. Now, here's the thing. It's not the answer to everything we face at all, but it is us as men of Life Center, unified, humble, and seeking God. And that right there is powerful. So we invite you to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might today. And we'd love to read this crafted prayer over you as we close today. Our Heavenly Father, today we pray for all the fathers in our lives, for those who are able to be with their children and loved ones, and the fathers who are separated by moments and by miles. Thank you for teaching us what it means to be a father, for giving us all the fathers in our lives who raise their own, and the men that support, mentor, and are a role model for others for the wisdom and strength they offer when times are tough, for their compassion and patience when we as children so often fail, for the gentle words and the quiet understanding that brings peace. We know all these things come from you, Lord. So Heavenly Father, I ask you to help us to be strong in you today and in the power of your might. Today, we need your armor that you have prepared for us so that we can stand against all that the devil will throw our way. We recognize that people are not our problems, but we have a real enemy that seeks to weaken us, one that we cannot see, but one who is seen by you. We pray that we will stand with your truth supporting us. We will wear your righteousness as a cover over our unrighteousness. We pray that we will be ready to share the gospel of peace and in faith we shield ourselves from the fiery darts of the wicked one. We guard our minds with your salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is your word. May we learn how to pray daily, humbly, yet powerfully in the spirit. May your word be quick to our thoughts so that we might open our mouths boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Lord, today may be joyful for some and hard for others. You're a father to the fatherless. You alone have the power to heal. Pray that you would bless this day and embrace every man here in your mercy. Pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.